Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. We'd like to welcome our viewers to another episode of the program, The Truth About Islam. Unfortunately, in the world today, there are many ideas, opinions, and understandings about the religion of Islam, which unfortunately are not correct. We'd like to take a few minutes of your time in this episode to address some of those issues and present to you the truth about Islam. Today, we're continuing our very special episodes of Islam in America. We're trying to bring you a glimpse into the life of the Muslims in America. And it has brought us here to the city of Chicago, Illinois, which is known as the Windy City, for the event of the 43rd annual ISNA convention, where more than 40,000 Muslims from around the country come together for these four days to hear lectures and have workshops, and there's a bazaar and many activities for the Muslims to participate in this weekend. We hope that we're going to go out to meet some of them and let you know from them and their experiences what life is like for Muslims in America. So please stay with us on this journey of discovery of Islam in America. I'm here with my sister in Islam, Amina Al Jindani. Salamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. And I hope I pronounced your family name correctly. And she is uh, from the organization of Islamic Networks Group. Uh, please, sister, tell us a bit about the Islamic Networks Group and what the objective is of the organizations and the type of services you provide to the Muslims here in America. Islamic Networks Group, or ING, is an outreach educational organization that was founded in 1993 for the purpose of providing education about Islam and Muslims to the greater American public. Uh, we began in that year by providing our services to schools where they often study about Islam as part of their history curriculum in uh, seventh grade and in high school. And since then, we've expanded to include a variety of institutions such as corporations, health care providers, law enforcement agencies, social service agencies. And especially since September 11th, uh, our work is more than ever in demand in a now, variety of institutions. Now, if I could just ask you, when you go to those agencies, what are the types of things that you tell them or what are the types of information you offer them? Well, we have different presentations for different venues, but in all of our presentations, we have a core part that includes the overview of Islam, definition of Islamic terminology, and talking about the six basic beliefs and the five basic pillars. And then we add to that to target the individual agencies. So for instance, when we go to schools, we have the understanding that they've studied this as part of the curriculum, so we're supplementing their curriculum. When we go into a hospital, we talk about some of the issues that might affect a Muslim patient, uh, gender interaction, covering, a diet, etc. When we go to law enforcement agencies, we talk about some of the issues that might impact a police officer going into a Muslim household, interacting again with opposite genders, etc. So in each presentation, we have a core aspect that is pretty much identical, and then we have the dimension that directly impacts that particular institution. Right. And what about uh, incidents of discrimination against Muslims in the workplace and other than the workplace? How do you guys assist Muslims in those cases? Well, our aim is to prevent that discrimination before it happens, uh, although we all